scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We want everything to happen sharp, sharp. We want anointing sharp, sharp. We want insight sharp, sharp. We want to have all the revelations of the kingdom. You want to listen to all the koinonia messages and receive all of the impartations at once. You want all of the prosperity and the blessings to just come at once. Except for the fact that that's not how spiritual things work. Hallelujah. God does not throw people up. He lifts people and it's a process. When he lifts you, he sustains you by knowledge. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not just enough to be lifted. You will come down. But when he raises you up and then he keeps you in a place of stability, no power in existence can bring you down. Hallelujah. One of the things that I really thought about um, I thought about a lot of things but one of them that struck a chord in my spirit and that will be the foundation of our teaching tonight I'll be very brief and then we'll pray you know over the last few weeks I've been challenging our convictions praise the Lord those of us who have been consistent for a while you know that I have been probing our ideologies to examine the foundation of the things that we believe and why we believe them transformation is a product of replacing your old ideologies with another that is new, that is sustainable and is able to take you to the place where God wants you to go. It's not enough that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. It's not even enough that we know that we have a prophetic destiny in Christ. Like the lovely lady there shared, that she knew that there was a place, there was a, a prophetic destiny for her life. But knowing it, brothers and sisters, is not enough. You must know how to get there and what it takes to get there. And then you must commit yourself. And this is one of the major problems with the body of Christ. We teach a lot about where we are going and where God is taking us. And the fact that there are many prophetic things reserved for us. And that is not a lie. Except for the fact that if believers are not equipped and shown how to live where they are to that prophetic destiny, they will be frustrated with time. The Bible says hope that is deferred can make the heart weary. Hallelujah. And so our job in this place is not only to reveal to you that there is a prophetic destiny for every single one of us in Christ. That there is an agenda of the spirit. That there is an intention in the heart of God for the nations and for us as individuals. But to guide us through the spiritual principles that will transit and transform us to that plane. And if you subject yourself to these teachings, listen to me, listen to me. If you subject yourself to the truths you are receiving here and you open up yourself wholly wholly the bible says how that joshua followed the lord wholly was it caleb the lord wholly not half-hearted 
there are many of us who um, we love the Lord but we are not really convinced about spiritual things hallelujah so our perception about spiritual things are just on the average you are not extreme you are not fanatic enough about your belief of spiritual things so you can bend when you hear anything else but the bible says be steadfast be immovable hallelujah you must be rooted in something listen let me tell you something if you ever hear a teaching here and you doubt its reality then don't keep quiet about it probe what you've heard and if you think it is not consistent with the word of god throw it away do not entertain anything in your heart you do not believe hallelujah there are many of us that have believed the teachings of men of god for the purpose of solidarity not because it is a revelation we plan to apply hallelujah probably there are many of us that believe some of the things that we share in this place simply because you are a worker and you have to believe it is that true if you were left all to yourself you would not agree with some of those things why deceive yourself kick away anything your spirit does not agree with and you must embrace something that is strong enough for you to be audacious about are you getting my point there is no point standing for nothing if you don't believe in prosperity don't behave and pretend like you believe it probe its reality until you are convicted for or against it if you do not believe in the anointing and the ministry of the holy spirit see it's a dangerous thing to follow the crowd whereas your conviction about that reality is not strong because in the end of it you will not get any results are, are you hearing what i'm saying very important so it's not enough to sit under this anointing and listen to the word of god the question is are you convinced that the truths that are brought are true enough for you to believe and hold on to that in the secret place where no one is watching you you know that this is still my conviction hallelujah i say this because there are many of us in the past maybe three four five years your spiritual life has not been stable it's been a journey like a pendulum right now you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again i heard a lady send me a text and said honestly since i graduated let me tell you sincerely i went to a church and i'm serving under that church and i've sat under that teaching for three two three months or thereabout and right now i don't even know what i should believe again if that becomes your testimony you will be angry in the future because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place there are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that i will die believing this truth the terrorists we have in this country they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are they sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass and they run people give towards those ideologies people give their lives towards those ideologies what do you believe what can you stand for about god about your life about your destiny are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of god's life we just hop around anything that looks like the truth so you travel back home and you hear something else and then you stop praying in tongues and you say this thing based on what i've had now i'm not really sure it doesn't make sense let me stop and then you come back and you are refired and then you are praying and then tomorrow is easy for you to bribe and then later on you say kite i need to repent where do you stand see the bible says i wish that thou art hot or cold you are neither hot nor cold you are lukewarm he said as a result i will spew you out of my mouth you must stand for something 
you must stand for an ideology you must stand for a dimension of truth it's like marriage you cannot marry every woman is that true you cannot marry every man so you see a pretty lady right now and say ah, ah, where have you been if i saw you i would not ask rose out and then the next thing you see another person and say you see that's how many of us are there is a lot of spiritual harlotry and at the end of it we are infected with all kinds of viruses nothing stands so you used to pray and fast but you had something and right now you don't even see a need for it again then you hear another message and you are now confused so believers are swinging like pendulums if your life must move forward you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the holy spirit listen let me tell you something i have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives and i am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives are you getting my point when we began to pursue the things of god years ago some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of god but right now the equation is still zero they have not been able to stand for something true there are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry you don't even know what to call of the ministry so within two weeks they say we are a healing ministry and later on they hear another hot message and they say our focus now is holiness and then later on they say our people cannot be poor and 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 and, and make heaven so we are focused where do you stand hallelujah are you hearing what i'm saying and many of us have been victims like that you've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did because you had something that made them useless and now you are looking for it you cannot find it because what you have held on to is not working listen we are going to pray in one minute and you are going to pray and say Lord let me not pretend this thing help me to stand for something real help me to stand for something true lift your voice and pray inside and outside pray for one minute I am communicating to us a burden of the spirit you must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about do you believe in divine health is it a reality to you do you believe in the supernatural power of god what has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe was it supposed to change what has not changed about your life why has it not changed Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today. And we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives there are things i will never believe i will never believe them there are things i will never stop believing there are things i'm open to change about because there are higher heights there are things i have found that are true go ahead and pray what have you found ask the lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies there's no need pretending it it's possible that you're here yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the holy spirit yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of god it is a dangerous thing to be in a place it is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it proximity is not the same as connectivity that you are close to an anointing that you are close to a revelation does not mean it will become part of your life hallelujah hallelujah 
there are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe we cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the the stigmatizations and the mockery probably or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives that you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married and that commitment you are so ashamed of it is that true to an extent that when you hear people talking and they say how about you so who is for this weekend you just laugh and then you feel to say no 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 I, I this is not my ideology it is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come hallelujah every great man is fanatic about something and if you must ever experience greatness especially in the spirit you must have something you are convinced about and you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions very interesting scripture the Bible says can we have that scripture again There is a way that what seems right seems right unto a man and appears straight the road is not straight <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing it is a straight road hallelujah like a drunkard when a drunkard takes eight bottles of beer he can see this door right here is that true based on his perspective the door is here and he will go convincingly now whether or not he's right will be shown shortly praise the lord he can see a gutter and according to what his eyes is seeing he's seen a staircase right and he reaches to that gutter and with every sense of conviction he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness now the bible says that there is a way that seems right many people have different ideas in the body of christ in the secular environment across our territories we have our ideas about the path to success we have our ideas about the way to know god more is that true we have our ideas about ministry how it should be we have our ideas about marriage we have our ideas about prosperity we have our ideas about the will of god about rapture about the coming of christ about satan so we live in a society where we have ideas in the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work. There are those who believe that working is an insult. Is that true? There are those who believe if you are not working, you are not yet a man or a woman. You are still a child. We have all kinds of ideologies. But the Bible says there is what? A way. It seems right unto a man. But in the end, look at it. The dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong. You see why it is dangerous? Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you took a 10-hour journey or 12-hour journey to Lagos and you followed a wrong road. And after 12 hours, you meet a, a military man on the road. And he says, where are you really going? And he says, sir, the truth is Lagos. He says, ah, you are at the other side of this nation. So it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way. One of the things that intrigued me, I, I remember then when I was in secondary school, you know, we wanted to make it so much. Every subject that we had to study, we took it very seriously. And um, I did fine arts. And one of the things that that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives right perspectives it was a very interesting subject for me because when we were being taught that um, lesson we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing is that true and they called it what perspectives so when we were given assignments, they will tell us from so, so, so perspective, draw this building. Praise the Lord. There were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective, they must be represented in your drawing. Is that true? And I enjoyed it so much. But then I got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone. But that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. Everyone say perspectives. That it matters your interpretation of life. And everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from. Are you getting my point now? If we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside. We may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside. Is that true? Based on what the artist is drawing. That was the information that his eyes could pick. He may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here. And then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it. My goodness, you would think koinonia is being held in a stadium. Perspective. So it is possible, please listen to me, that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life. Are you getting my point? And be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective. It's one of the biggest problems with the body of Christ. And so, a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase. Are you getting me? And a good life and a great life. And from his perspective, that is all there is to the Christian experience. Are you getting me? And then the Christians in places like Iraq, and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood. It can cost you your life. This is their perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? And to them, it may not interest them so much when you are teaching. This guy here is teaching, I have come that you may have life. Is that true? And have life more abundantly. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be poor. Whereas another person looking at the same truth from another perspective 
begins to speak and say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If it will cost me my life, so be it. Yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective, he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven there is a fight and this is his perspective now the trouble starts hear me when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective you see where error begins to come in when we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body. Hallelujah. And so I'm here. This is the perspective I've seen. And now I look at the person in Iraq and I say, this guy does not have faith. If he had faith, guns and bullets will not enter his body. Whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here. Are you getting me? I live in a house that is secured digitally. And these guys here are speaking and say, Lord, help these people not to be carnal. Let them not miss heaven. Let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread. Yet we are all supposed to be believers. And then there are others, watch this, that this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects for instance in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects there are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, feel your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says, there is a way. Everybody said, there is a way. Now, the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues. And it is important that you get to a point in your life. This is why you find out. Have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches? Have you seen the commotion that happens there during things like fasting and prayer or, or maybe Christmas or New Year or something? Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy. Who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels. There are, there are many. There are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said, some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said, they are vessels of clay 
It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least, they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you, not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same? It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. It was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they did. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord though. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, How are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books. That try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it. And truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it. And entered something else. There are others who read it. And nothing happened. Lift your hands and say Lord. Reveal the truth to me. Please say it Lord. Reveal the truth to me. Jesus said it this way. I am the way. Not any prophet. Not any apostle. Not any teacher. Not any pastor. I am the way. You follow men. You will follow a lot of things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life. Is to follow apostle Joshua Selman. You are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone be true. 
that means if you build your life hear me if you build your ministry around a man you are in for shock i've said this thing again and again and again this is even the secret of increase in ministry if i be lifted up i tell you if you see any ministry that god is honoring with his presence with signs and wonders multiplied people and all of that jesus is being glorified in that ministry if i be lifted up i will draw all men to myself there is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life no matter how nice it sounds there is something you can hear no matter how ugly it sounds it will make you a wonder in life there is something you will hear that will add to your spiritual confusion in life there is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest The Bible says be careful how you hear and tonight the Lord is bringing a word he said there is a way there is a way that seems right there are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true hallelujah we believe we are so convinced we've argued it that this is the truth Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty, meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit. According to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence. And his spiritual argument. As powerful as they were. They were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got a one in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why you see brothers and sisters. It's part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because i realize that when i stand on this stage it's a privileged position not everybody is daft spiritually pastors never forget this when you stand there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking this is the situation the guy had been called a great man 
like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and it was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. he says, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day there were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla and they kept quiet worship team sang and the guy wore suit he came up and he began to speak when Aquila and Priscilla heard they said wow this guy has great potentials but there is so much you do not know how do you feel when someone tells you that embarrassing right if you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says when they had, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha! Ah, amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking, you see the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God. More. So it's not like the guy did not try but there were areas of lapses areas of excesses areas where his eye had not seen when they took him what happened they expounded they said all right there is the baptism of john but did you know that pentecost happened the guy said no the person who taught me did not teach me that probably the person who taught him taught him as alpha maybe he was one of the scribes the scribes are the suspects in this teaching Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody is saying your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. But could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth, but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom? And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone. Are you hearing me? That there are times that if need be, you may have to die for your convictions. If you open your heart to that dimension, 
then you can enjoy the blessings of God. Buy all the flashy cars, buy great houses, but they never take your place because you know that you are a bond servant. Your Christian experience becomes more perfect. Are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness, rulers, spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective. You become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant Christian it makes your Christian experience richer are you hearing what I'm saying and it is for this cause Ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion listen please that he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens verse 10 Verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some. And some. And some. And some. Perspectives. He gave unto them. He engraced his body with gifts. Listen to me. Revealed perspectives to them. There are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs, but they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there. If you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up, there are people like that. There are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life? Just locate them. You are not going to hear any revelation. I traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference. And there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness, my goodness. These people, these people zeroed down the prophetic. It was almost prophecy by, at will. I've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people. But I'm not called into the prophetic office. The grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you. So for me, I know that to prophesy, it must happen with fasting and prayer. It's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever... The prophetic gift must be activated in me is on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12, 
Why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry to the end that, verse 13, till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko. And who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again. At the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe do not miss TV. People don't listen. Let me go on this. Let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel. But you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadeh and his message. So please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access there are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, people just say prophet. What? Even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes 
Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago and it was so much. You know, then, now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> for me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I will not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries. They cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe. That even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say, before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benway. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, no, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have. This is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so-so-so person's messages. Don't listen to so-so-so person's tape. Throw it away. And you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe... One great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas, there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you. Part of the knowledge that I have now 
was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product. Apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality. See, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me. If I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. <laughs> yes, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is, it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinchin or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place, and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive, they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues... Are you getting me? Is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time. I remember then we had to cram the apostles creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man that was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16. They know you have not been, you have not been following. Because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month. That we, This memory you see, it's not just that, okay, the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it, but if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? For now. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. 
we were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And I said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters. It was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlin Jack. As we're busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not, you go home. Straight there, you are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call, you know how the Bible says it, rebuke one, then call another. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to, anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this. No. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I have explained to you. Do you now see that this flogging is necessitated. I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car eh? or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter typed. And the reason is that you are being a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> Have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, 
what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God, but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God, mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy, very short guy. My goodness. Look, that guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me and he said there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You are ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it. Very quickly, we are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to, you see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with Ike, we traveled two years or so ago. While we were ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike also had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent. Because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor... You are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. and say, when you say, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you're a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people where did you go to? 
I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet, David danced. Yet, it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never I have made this vow under God. I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, i rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now, and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis. You are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach. And I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me. Scared me in a way that I said, ah! And then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you. But God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. 
you are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who are people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samadeemi. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. Now I say, nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. You say it's witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. 
verse 1, Matthew 15. Please let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you, lay hands on this sick body. And you say, no, Kai, I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands. And God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back. You transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother. And he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men. Change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to. It's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual. We love things happening normally. Let it be happening the way I have always known it. And the moment I see another perspective, then it is not of God. It is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up. It is not done this way. It is not done this way. I've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage, putting a little place like this to honor the man of God and guests is carnal. Everybody is one before God. And in those churches when the pastor comes, he can sit anywhere. Once it's time for someone, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview. You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. You didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me. And you entered. The people were looking at you. And Young man, keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. This is what I believe. 
because you were not taught the principles of excellence you called it spirituality but you've lost your job because of it you were not taught diligence that a christian is also an agent of national transformation and time to walk in the office you are fasting and praying and you are not doing anything you left your job undone when it was time to promote you you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit physically they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group are you hearing what i'm saying and there are people who just sit down and feel i know all the principles i know the principles of business expertise i understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy i'm telling you the truth when satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in god that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell there are anointed believers with no character because they've been taught it's all about the anointing once the anointing is in the building people must come so you can be sleeping around you are anointed and you know we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things and you come back and see the hand of God it convinces you that God is with you you do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you Samson said I will arise as before and all of a sudden he found out that is here he said you have been weighed O king in the balance God weighs men oh. he won't weigh you in one day he will keep weighing you you will be, that's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once four years ago this man was a great man everywhere but now the lampstand has been taken let me tell you god can take away the candlestick of men and give others read your bible he took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person may god not take your position and give another saul was still in the palace whereas the mantle had left him many churches have been stunted they are they are at the verge of the next season of their lives i was listening to a man of god and i had a revelation that blew my head it was on youtube i don't even know him just me just getting for the first time and this guy shared something that scattered my head and it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it. And run into problems I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us and then I listened to an apostle of wisdom dr. Mike Budok and he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry he said never try to do to people what only God can do to them deliverance that was it I learned how to sleep soundly because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me am awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably... I don't know maybe i would have died by now that was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once it was getting too much everybody would call at every time i became a receptionist 
hundreds of phone calls like every 30 minutes someone is calling and the person can cry for 15 i was wearing out literally and then the lord said why don't you put something like that some of you are in that thing right now you have you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person visitors came to your house you went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti you bought them books you went to Jordan bookstore bought books I want you to be spiritual now you are in trouble and the people have turned their back and they are insulting you because you want a good name is someone learning something here there are many of us you are spiritual but if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp. No. I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels, there are dimensions in the spirit I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth. Of what the Holy Spirit is communicating and so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible this is what koinonia is all about opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us maybe we'll take it another time I actually plan on talking about divine direction very very important ah Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are, you can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction, divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet. A genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one on one session with us. And say by the grace of God. I will talk with you one on one. And. Let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait. Because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness, but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what 
Oh, no, no. Psalm, sorry. Psalm 37, verse 23. I'm sorry. Psalm 37, verse 23. We need divine direction in our lives. You can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came... That's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life but you need divine direction. And let me tell you something. It is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer. You will struggle. Nothing will work. When you are in the geography when you are in your assigned place, everything is commanded to work for you there. Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure which many times is limited i need divine direction because if god does not direct me i can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of koinonia i can look out and say wow there's a crowd inside and outside i'm comfortable i'm comfortable it's okay nothing more Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking. And you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. That means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know. Whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, I will never marry a man who is rich. Who is not rich, for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light. Whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that is darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing. Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, re a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So, we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job 
that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone. And I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements. To be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not, listen. It's not an insult. Look up please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please. Do not be embarrassed. When you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? Do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are. No matter how apostolic you think you are. Many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of partition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, you say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja, my Tama or somewhere there, somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing. But God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be or not? Where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, man of God, 
this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits and members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet. But you see, listen, it is not of him that willeth. It is not of him that runneth. If you cannot wait for God to direct you, I'll never forget I was rejoicing. The year we're about to prepare for Koinonia to start, I was so happy. Because I was saying, Lord, my, share my assignment now is over. Let me run and find something very useful and do. Let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere. Let me just enjoy my life. And then God summoned a meeting at once. And when I went, I almost fainted the day God told me. Those who were around, my reaction, it was like, how about God? How about God? And I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us, we will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He said, I want a healing ministry. God said, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners so God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the spirit. Either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also. It says when he the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people. Especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7. We see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt. They were forewarned. Genesis 41. Don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. 
it was the pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack and it helped them to prepare in exodus chapter 3 verse 2 to 3 moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer it is one way god speaks and directs men first kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15 first kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15 after solomon loved the lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings the bible says god came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and god gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule israel in acts chapter 9 and acts chapter 10 they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas. And Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream. In a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul. He's in a house. He prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life hallelujah wisdom to your life I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking. And I was sharing with him about something. And while I was talking, to me, it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been matching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling. When I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them and wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that. And that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to... He used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received. Because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think he would be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel 
was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. First Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle John C. Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 to 15. I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so. So that our time is gone. I mean, this project this one now. 2 Kings 8 verse 7 to 15. Is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, the man of God is come. Hit our next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant. Take a present in thy hand. See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty-handed? And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse, please. So Hazael went, hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden, and came and stood before him and said, Thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Now watch this, verse 10. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto the man of God, Thou mayest certainly recover. He said, How be it? Let me tell you the truth. I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it? The Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just frowned his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says, he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and thou wilt dash their children and rip up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, the Lord had shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry. I'm joking, you no. Know? You are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 
2 Kings 6 verse 25 down to the end tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry and in 24 hours it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38 we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, Oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sends the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday? But what he's saying now. Listen. God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change. Sorry. But his plans can change. Please I need you to say. To get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively. But I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil. He can decide that you go by road. So the destination you arrived. But the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out. Could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying. It proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are both some friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Sever yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on his own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rema. That the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally. Prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11. From verse 27 to 30. That's the first time we see. That prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there. Long in the Bible. Not a prophet. Prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11. From verse 27.
prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one. Many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be great death, famine throughout the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul. And he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching. But then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen. Never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage. Don't listen to people who speak carnally. And say just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord. I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying start with government girls secondary school. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried 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 they had kept him and he was getting frustrated and one time we got talking and i said look young man listen you do the job the job he was doing he was teaching in one school guess his salary five thousand naira per month and if you don't come to teach the students they will still deduct something from it i told him remain there he's teaching you discipline he's teaching you submission God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. He said, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. 
And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home? Where did it go? She said, it's still there, oh, but I... I found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it. I said, really? Wisdom from experience. Could it be that this is a revelation for someone? You finish school. You've done everything. For one year, you did not get a job. People think you don't have faith. God is teaching you the art of waiting. It will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly. You are virtuous. Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God he says, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. In just five minutes that we have left, listen, before we pray, I want you to examine in one minute. All the wrong decisions that you have taken because you did not seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. God told you pray about it. You said it does not matter. If only you prayed. If only you took out time. You probably would not have started the ministry. Now you've started the ministry and it's killing you. If only you took out time to pray. You would have known that that friend is a deceitful person. He looked like an angel. When he came, he told you he was a man of God. Little did you know that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But God was telling you, pray. But you said, I'm in love. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I refuse to move without you. I refuse to take decisions in life without you. No matter how achievable they look. You can become successful without God. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It pays, it pays to be divinely directed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way of doing ministry that seems right. There is a way of doing business that seems right. There is a way of getting a job that seems right. There is a way of getting a husband and a wife that seems right. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way of trying to get the anointing. There is a way of trying to access revelation that seems right. Lift your voice. And say Lord I don't trust myself outside of you. I need you to help me. Help me. Help me. End confusion from my life. End darkness from my life. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I'm tired of doing the wrong things. Go ahead and pray. I'm tired of cycle after cycle of mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes for as long as you learn the lesson. But when it becomes the theme of your life, you need divine direction. In one year, you have entered 10 relationships. They have all landed you in trouble. You need to find direction. You have entered 10 businesses. They've all landed you in trouble. You've started ministry everywhere. But you've ended up with scandal after scandal. Tonight is the time to flog it out with destiny. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I'm tired. Oh, I can't go anywhere without you. My destiny is at the mercy of your voice. My destiny is at the mercy of your word. 
Koinonia is at the mercy of your direction. Go ahead and pray. Just two prayer points tonight. Where is the place of my healing, oh God? Direct me. Where is the place of power? Where is the place where I will access life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You reign, you reign. Hello, him. You reign. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies. And it's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea, Kato Sotoya, divine idea. Someone has been praying, Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen, the Lord is speaking to me and this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people, listen, two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah.
the Lord is taking me in the spirit and I'm seeing a map get ready please I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria and I'm landing in Kaduna state I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now right now right now right now by the spirit of God Kaduna state Kaduna state I see an anointing only Kaduna state Shabarapakata Embreketeta Kaduna state a miracle happening for Kaduna people Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna there is an anointing there is an anointing God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance breakthrough and deliverance breakthrough and deliverance breakthrough hallelujah I don't know why God does this brothers and sisters don't ask me don't ask me this is an operation it's called the ministry of signs and wonders now I see Benway state Benway state I see an anointing on Benway state now an anointing on Benway state Benway state Shakatoda Parata Reketekete help them please Benway state you can't stand it you don't have to know whether you don't know your state Benway state miracles miracles go into Benway state I hear or to go in the spirit a miracle happening right there right there all those connected to that bloodline there is a miracle for you right now don't trivialize what is happening here brothers and sisters these are territorial breakthroughs territorial breakthroughs hallelujah 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 i'll pray for stephanie 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 i'm hearing a name stephanie please let's save time who is stephanie you're like a red dress or something like that stephanie who is that stephanie there is a stephanie i'm seeing i will pray for you but i'm seeing someone and in the vision the lord is showing me it's like a red dress but i'll pray for you lift your hands the lord says i should tell you witchcraft ends in your family witchcraft ends in your family you will hear testimonies that will surprise you right now i stretch my hands towards you now it ends by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus johanna 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 i'm hearing a name johanna please save our time johanna i don't know who that person is johanna i won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast johanna 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 whether you're here inside or outside johanna 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 there is a lady following us from lagos your name is blessing your name is blessing you are in a room you are following from a laptop the lord is saying i should tell you he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family in the name of the lord jesus christ he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family hallelujah now lift your hands i want to pray i tell you i feel fire in this place it's time to command deliverance it's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives forces of darkness the lord is bringing deliverance to your family your family the lord is bringing deliverance i'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family and the lord is bringing deliverance right now right now to the family right now to the family the lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family a major deliverance to the family hallelujah listen listen as i begin to pray for you all those devils that has tied the lives of people it doesn't mean you are possessed it's not an insult you may not even know you may be minding yourself just like you're standing now i'm going to command those devils they must go they are not only going to live your life they must live your family are we together listen some of you brought many prayer lists just one spirit living will produce all that testimony believe me believe me lift your hands 
My heart, my soul, I give to you. I bow to you, my Savior and King. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your anointing to deliver, to set free. There are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they must go. I want you to bring them out now. They must go. They must go now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. You'll be surprised to see what happens. Kai, 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 Kai. I see spirits of delay. 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 Spirits that have held men down. All kinds of spirits. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, Lord, as your people shout, may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough, 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 flowing sound, my flowing sound. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Now I command those demons, go now, go now, go now. Kato Sotoba. Lift your voice and begin to command every spirit. Every devil. Help them please. Go now. I command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people. You must go now. Inside and outside. I command you. Inside and outside. Bring them out. I command you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice. I command you. You must go now, now, by the anointing of the Spirit. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their breakthrough. Lift your hands while you pray. Atasile ka prosu do pariata kotusha. Prende ka brato soko tu baliakata. I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them. And the Lord is saying to unlock those chains. Unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus. Wherever they are. Any place in your life. That has been chained and tied. Right now in Jesus name. I command those gates be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, take it, take it, toss it, toss it, toss it, be broken. Ushers, please. Chains, be broken. In the name of Jesus. Chains, be broken. Be broken. Kalapatoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, charity. 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 I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow, the roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. 
Something is going to happen here now. Ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run, help them. So that it's not like they, they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit. So that they don't enjoy anybody. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Guys, be sensitive, please. In the name, help them, please. It's already happening. That's the instruction God is giving me. An anointing will come on you physically. You will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough. Right now, Lord, I release that anointing. Give men speed. Give men speed. Give men speed. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Give men speed. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahaz. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. What is Abuja? I have a fiancé. Yeah, you have yeah. somebody there. Yes. Sir. That's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you Amen. maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past, uh -uh, your future has to change. It, the, what the past is, is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you a new chapter. A new chapter. Come, my dear, in the name of Jesus, God is giving you a job. May He connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name Charity? Is your name Charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to one more case before I pray. I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we do a lot of other things. Before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout, I receive. Don't worry. Follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Shalom, the mighty in this place. Shalom, 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 shalom. You welcome in this place. Shalom. 
I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit. Doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. Hmm. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen. There is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online, you can follow. I want to pray. I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy. And I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus, help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God. Be established. Be established. Be established. Be established. I lose your hands. I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit. Be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land by the spirit go and build that house by the spirit i open strange doors don't say you are too young it's an anointing it's not your effort receive it in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now leave those who are standing here very quickly if you are here specifically please listen you are here specifically trusting God to stamp the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know, God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've heard the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. That's the shout there. That's the shout by the Spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married. Look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? You must be married except if you are standing in for someone don't stand here doubting there is an anointing i see a river some of you as you are standing right now the power of god will come on you just before i even start praying yeah. look at this will you open up the gate open up the door Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? I will 
I have to pray for you by myself. That's the instruction. I will do it very fast. You don't have to tell me any stories. I don't care what they said. Low sperm count. Um, infertility. I don't care the report. As you receive that touch, if you are standing for someone, call them. Let them know you are praying for them. Are we together now? Don't just say I receive and then you stand there. Let the people know what God is doing. I'll have to do this very fast. After that, we'll pray for the sick generally. We have a lot to do. Don't lose touch of this. Don't come for koinonia and then sit down. This is not a museum. Let your heart be connected. Because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit. I'm going to be very fast. I'm seeing... Listen. I'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now, as I pray for you, many of you, strange things will happen. Some of you are standing for other people, but as I pray for you, God is securing something in your life. You don't have to come out, please, if you do not belong to this category. That's the lady I'm talking about. Now, I'll pray quickly. Just give us um, uh, uh, keys. Just play something very quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, let everyone here return with a miracle child. No matter what the spirit is, no matter what the issue is, fibroid, infertility, low sperm count, whatever, I don't care what the name is, it must live right now. In the name of Jesus, please shift very quickly. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Now, go and carry your miracle child. Madam, carry your miracle baby. Carry it now. Carry it now. My God, I tell you, I see babies literally in the realm of the spirit. Carry it now. Carry it now. Shabaratosia. Carry it right now. Carry it right now. Miracle. 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 Shatadadadabalada. Regete, gete, gete. There is an unusual grace here. There is an unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. Unusual grace. As I lay my hands on you, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Heal now. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Grace, grace, grace. Shabaladabaladaba. Rekete kete. Embrotokotobaladabaladaba. Shabaladabaladaba. Grace, grace, grace. Help them please. Let's save time. Grace, receive your miracle, baby. My God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored. Receive it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it, take it, take it, take it in the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now. 
right now, right now, right now, right now. Let it be open in the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 grace. Shebara do bara 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 bara. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Eko to shobara bara. The Lord is healing irregular menstruation. Irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby. Receive your child out, out of her. Now, return with your miracle child. Now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it ends now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. Keep praying in the spirit, don't just watch, miracles, miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles. The Lord is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace, 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 grace. Open. Open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka para toka toka tele ba 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 ba. Embrete koto. Leke te koto shike. Shike te ke te ke te. Rapa to koto shike te le mosh. Embrete koto ba 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 ba. While I'm praying for you, I want a woman to come up. Yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant. You have been having nightmares. Somebody comes to you in the night. You have you even wake up shouting. You've not been able to sleep. There is a pregnant woman here with that situation. God wants to set you free. Please, where are you? If you care for you, can come and God will set you free right now. You are pregnant, but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams. Like a nightmare. Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself. For someone. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing. Like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like... A, a living a real object please who is that i have to pray for you like i said if you have the courage there's nothing to be ashamed what who is this one why is she here coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you're okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital 
so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say it. this is bad it's like a doctor madam kai and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm saying. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dad, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster. That will want your life to keep going without achievement i'm praying for you now may that devil live your life forever in the name of jesus the spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of jesus i use her as a point of contact this is a nice woman she didn't bargain for this and she loves god are you seeing that now who knows probably you were trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently but everything grounded hold my hand man to a point that that do you know what it means another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile oh i'm not talking of pile Hold my hands, man. I'm angry in my spirit. In the name of the Lord God that I serve, I speak to you from the depth of my spirit. Right now, I command that devil, let her go now. Out! Out! In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on your stomach. I command that wicked spirit, whatever your name is, don't only leave her, pack your load with you. And go out of this woman's life. I restore you even physiologically. In the name of Jesus Christ. This old face is not your own. You are not that old. I change it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her. Give Jesus praise. Father, thank you. Supernatural miracle. Supernatural miracle. Supernatural miracle. Supernatural miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands. It's over. Over in the name of Jesus. Over in the name of Jesus. It's over in the name of Jesus. There's one mama here. The anointing of the Spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people. There's one mama here. I'm seeing in a vision. The power of God will land on you. You, you may not even be expecting it. Not everybody. This, this is an, like an elderly woman. But I'm seeing an anointing. Right now, wherever you are. Father, something will land. It's like fire. It will land on one mama now. Supernatural grace. You will start laying hands on the sick. Oh, that's the woman there. Help her. Help her, please. Bring her here. Supernatural anointing. Supernatural anointing for the for barrenness. Look at this. Look at this. This is an elderly woman, for God's sake. Shera tabaroto koto baradia. Lembra bata tatso katiya. Ekara takata latotia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. 
Daddy, why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir, for barrenness. You, where is your wife, sir? Is here, but I can't locate her now. Madam, come. You will see a man like, hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child? You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? <laughs> wife? Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. If you ever tell me wickedness is not real, if you ever tell me wickedness is not real, our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children. Ejimi, am I correct? Look at this. Abraham waited 25 years. Our daddy has waited 32 years. Sir, you came here by faith. You are our father here. And you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here. Look at me, sir. I want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that I'm the one that has told you. In the name of Jesus, I don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not. I don't care whether she can give birth or not. I decree to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hand, sir. You will not have a child. You will have children. Listen, sir. I'm not saying God told me to tell you. I am telling you. There is something called a prophet's reward. In the name that is above all names, I speak over your life. That force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity, I cancel it right now. Sir, you are struggling financially. I have to pray for you. God wants to open a door for you. I, I hope you are not embarrassed sir, that I'm talking to you. Please hold my hands. Jesus, please change our daddy's story. Let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, please, we are going to be very fast. You are here for yourself. You are not married. You are standing for something. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural miracle. Now, we are going to be very fast. You can see it's past nine, but there are so many things we need to do. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who are here trusting God for any miracle, any miracle aside from barrenness, except if you have another thing, I don't care what it is. Please, you are going to come. There are men of God here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly. It's a miracle service. Now, look at this. I want you to organize yourself. Uh, those outside, hold on, please, hold on. Overflow 2. Just walk right to the front. You don't have to come here. Overflow 2. The whole of those occupying the roadside. Just walk right to the front of your, your stage there. Overflow 1 here. Just walk right to the front here. All those who are here, you can just come out. Come out, organize yourself. You are sick? Or you are standing in for people? Jesus. Listen. If you are standing here for impartation, go back, please. Please, please, don't make a fool of yourself. We are going to pray for I know some of you just want me to touch you. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't play games with God. Go back to your seat. You will receive impartation. Some of you, there's nothing wrong. You just want in case if there's something, I should still pray. Go back. Please, we don't have that time. 
are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people have you noticed that in the last one month there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses someone will just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again that devil is a liar in the name of jesus and i also understand there have been mysterious accidents you are minding your business car will jam you bike will jam you we are going to take care of all those things today it's called a miracle service now this is what will happen please and please anybody who lays hands on you just go back to your seat believing in faith we don't have time to take testimonies i know there are so many miracles if we do that we're going to spend time here there are other things we need to do are we together now so i will pray for you you can see there are so many people uh let's do it this way pastor pete is with me here so um pastor pete ah no edgy you know what edgy pastor femi you can go outside you can just handle that that one there pastor alpha pastor alpha kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor edgy and you and who you and pastor femi yes we are not just I don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you we are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise where's promise join a jimmy promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol they, so that don't waylay anybody please behave yourself don't disturb anybody i'm here with pastor pete benga we're going to pray in the name that is above all names shout amen, amen. father we're standing in unity from three different points you have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people lord every man of god represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the holy ghost is there he's representing us and he will touch you while that is happening concurrently please your miracle um uh your prayer request pass it ushers if you can connect yourself i know that there are not many of you protocol you can help them please pass your prayer request if someone sent a text to you now you can copy it quickly please pass your prayer request while laying hands on you if they give you a prophetic word receive it please guys don't waste time on one person let's just do it fast jesus will give you praise I have no other God but you. Now. I have no other God but you. Right now. And you have done what no man has done. Please, as they pray for you, just quietly go back to your seat. Rejoice in. Go back to your seat. Check yourself.
Out. Oh Lord, you Out. are wonderful. Let's have the name of Jesus. Out. Help me say excellent. Out.
make sure you sub make sure you're submitting your prayer requests make sure you're submitting your prayer requests and then when they pray for you you don't have to go back to another line once they pray for you i'd like you to believe you will see god is doing miracles pass your prayer requests I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason 
the Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now? Praise the Lord. There is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before before we come to prayer. I know there are people, how far have we gone, those outside? There's still a number of people. Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jake. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one. And then, um, ushers, please, let's have the request so that we can finish it because I, I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. David down the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing an anointing is to come upon you pare sufre tinda ilo si predia rekito fiesta kila handa ha ora ke te subelenda pragadose rekete ga baka kokosho ke palagana renda pa preia so palenda ha resa profilesta kalionde I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground. It will come upon the feet of many now. Upon the feet of many. The fire of God will come upon your feet. The fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire a quickening. My God.
Tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you. Tonight, 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 tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are standing here in the midst of Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And as we worship you, we build your soul. And as we worship you, we worship you. Jesus, and take, take your, your place. Place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We're going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We're praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in your divine wisdom. When you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will. Lord you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein oh God. Your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here. Those that are across the world. From the internet. They have written their own requests, understanding the mystery of the scribes. That whatever is written has a spiritual significance. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men. The angels in Revelation chapter 8, that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of God. Right now, by the power of God, let those angels move swiftly in the name of Jesus. An angel appeared unto Daniel and said, I have come because of your word. 
Father, let angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, He that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God, with results and answers, and the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now, we release grace. And Lord, we release mercy. In the name of Jesus, every prayer written in this ground, upon this mountain, it is answered. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Aside from those that are still praying for peace, everybody rise up. Please rise up quickly. Rise up to receive a prophecy and the impartation. Two things we'll do at once, just two, three minutes, and then we're done. Please make sure you wait to the end of the service so that you listen to every announcement. I want to pray. We want to, every miracle service is a platform to activate grace. You have seen certain dimensions of God, but there's more. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you and I'll join it with the prophecy. This is the second to the last miracle service for the year. So don't be careless about it. Open up your spirit. There are people here who have been crying and say, Lord, I know there can be a new dimension of grace. I have seen your hand in my life, but I want to see a greater level. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Drink of a new fountain of grace. Help him, please. Drink of a new fountain of grace. I activate the gifts of the spirit at the count of four. One, two, three, four. Step into it. Eyes be open, ears open. Receive impartations. Receive impartations. Receive grace, grace. Impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The kind of favor that you have not seen from the start of this year till now. On this mountain tonight, I invoke it upon your spirit. May that favor come upon you. I call the heavens to bear witness that you are a carrier of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Where it has worked for others and has refused to work for you, I declare the grace that makes things work the power of performance receive it right now receive it right now in the name of Jesus everything dead in your life I don't care what and I don't care how long in the name of the one who raised from the dead I command that thing to come back to life I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands Tonight, like Pastor Jake prayed, revelations of strategies from the realm of the spirit. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Receive it is coming on you. Supernatural impartation. I pray for you. Everyone here who wants to start a business, start a company, start something, any value adding platform. I prophesy upon you the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it every student here hear me I program your spirit to rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus on common understanding on common illumination any final year student here who it looks as if you are not going from the look of things in the name of Jesus we change it here right now believe God we change it now we change it now we change it from your faculty 
we change it from your department by the authority of the kingdom in the name of Jesus anyone here carrying any track record of bad luck it works for others until it gets to your turn then there must be stories I separate you and bad luck forever. I separate you and tragedy forever. Hallelujah. This spirit that came to Zaria that is causing men to be sick, hear my voice. There is a platform where ambassadors are in this kingdom therefore i stand apostolically and prophetically we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and we punish such operations in the name of jesus may you and your kind be banished from this city in the name of jesus that spirit that brings accident and untimely death looming around our territory no 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 zaria is a place of light it's not the place where any spirit will come and loom and i speak prophetically Latera to Sotopata. across this place every spirit of untimely death hear my voice in the name of jesus i command the gates closed over you i command the gates closed over you not by accident not by bomb blast the gate closes over you everything that has left your hand that left your life that should not have left i don't care where it went to i call it back may it gather its kind and come to you i say it again everything that has left your life has left your hand may it gather its kind and return back to you listen anyone here who the devil has taunted spiritually financially in influence you are not rising for whatever reason in the name of jesus i force you to rise in the name of Jesus, I force you to grow. If there is anybody in this place, from January till now, you have not stood here to testify, I prophesy to you, now and the next 30 days, may it be your turn to stand here. Believe me, believe me, now and the next 30 days, may you stand here to testify anyone here called jobless or you are doing a job that is not a job any nonsense thing around that is not bringing you tangible sizable benefit in the name of jesus i don't know where the jobs are we create vacancies and put you there we create vacancies and put you there any man or woman who said over his dead body for you to succeed i declare their prayers answered tonight i declare their prayers answered tonight i pray for you listen there is a mantle of honor upon this house and if you belong to this family it should be evident in your life and in case it's not yet working like a programming in a computer like an antivirus i place that mantle of honor upon you may it shield you from shame may it cover ta -ta 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 -ta. may it shield you from shame hallelujah every spiritual life that has died here no more passion for the things of god no more passion for prayer no more passion for the word of god i plant in you a fresh passion tonight fresh passion tonight we're rounding up every family represented here 
that has not had a reason to smile this year it's been tears and tears from home every time they call you from home one episode of bad luck may this be the first good news you will hear good news of breakthrough good news of increase good news of speed in the name of Jesus Christ whoever rises up to find you may the God that I serve even in the secret may he fight them we're rounding up I pray for you barrenness or its kind looming around your life looming around your environment whether in your body whether in your finances whether in the works of your hands in your ministry in your business I pray for you the water that flows that makes the barren plant to receive strength and begin to rise and become a great tree I introduce that water into your life therefore I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus be fruitful be fruitful multiply multiply replenish subdue and may you command absolute dominion absolute dominion help them please every strange nightmare strangers roaming around your sleep not allowing you to enjoy the sleep that the saints should enjoy disturbing you oppressing you sleeping with you manipulating your dreams confusing you you don't know whether it's god speaking or it's the devil in the name of jesus i banish those strangers from your life forever i banish those strangers from your life forever in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally for you there is a spirit of increase there is a spirit that causes men to prosper there is a mantle that brings wealth from the east the north the south you have the value but you need the access you have the value already you are not a non-entity you already have what to give but the other side of the exchange is what you are looking for from the east to the west to the north to the south whoever must show up in your life in the next 30 days to be a ladder for you to climb to the next level i prophesy and i call them into your destiny i prophesy and i call them into your destiny there's someone here god is giving you a word go and register a company and just keep it you may not know what to do with it but just keep it keep it and give god space to use it and surprise you that's a prophetic word for somebody here just register it and keep it you there is no business to source for don't worry register it and keep it and give god space to surprise you may that happen to you in the name of jesus christ every circle of continual suffering where you think you are about to rise up another episode of trouble i declare where the devil put a comma i change it to a full stop never again never again never again in the name of jesus christ you're here you need jesus you're saying man of god i have watched the things that the holy spirit has done i have seen the transformation keep standing please no sitting no moving around let's stand up please keep standing you're here and you're saying apostle i want you to pray for me i love jesus christ but for some reason my life has gone haywire. I cannot say that I'm truly enjoying relationship and fellowship with him. And there are others who are saying, man of God, this is the first time. I've always mocked at the things of God. I've never really been serious. But now, I'm making up my mind for Jesus. Overflow 1, overflow 2, all following us online. Wherever you are. I know that our time is gone, but let's honor Jesus. 
we cannot end this meeting without giving this opportunity wherever you are don't wait for anybody to come be the first i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here i want to lead you to jesus jesus is already talking to some people god bless you as you come god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are people outside run like there's fire on the mountain don't stroll around run like there's fire on the mountain one i'll count one to five and that will be it. two lord i give you my three please we're out of time run run to jesus i live for A fresh start, a new beginning. Will you have your way? I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Hallelujah. If you are still coming, please rush and join them. It should not take a long time. If you are still indecisive, then just remain at your seat. By now you should know where you stand. When the Titanic sank, there were only two lists. Those who were saved, those who were lost. If you are not sure you are saved, come out and join them. Because it means that you are not, you are not saved. You should be very sure. If you are a man of God, it's like, I think I'm saved. Come and join them and get a very uh, a, a high level of certainty to know that you are in Christ. In the name of Jesus. I appreciate everyone. Daddy, thank you for coming. And all those who have come to make this decision. Please understand you are not reciting a poem. Don't be emotional about it. This is a simple decision, but it's the greatest miracle. You are opening up your heart to the life of God. The Bible says, and this life is in his son. It says, he that hath the son hath eternal life. Say this after me with all your heart and sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I come to you and I declare that you receive my life and manage it for me. I receive your life into my spirit. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.